That's what happens when the engineers are told, forget the rules, go nuts. This is the story of a car that was never meant to exist. The time Porsche built a car so fast, so violent, and so nimble that it made F1 cars look like they had arthritis. A car born from dominance, set free after retirement, and then turned final boss of motorsports. Because this is the Porsche 919 Evo. Our story begins in the early 2010s. Porsche was returning to their top tier endurance racing in the WEC, World Endurance Championship. They hadn't raced there since 1998, but they were coming back with something futuristic. A hybrid race car built for speed, efficiency, and 24-hour dominance. Enter the Porsche 919 Hybrid. This thing was a spaceship. Carbon monocoque chassis, two liter V4 turbocharged engine, and an eight megajoule hybrid recovery system that made Tesla look like Traxxas. It made about 900 horsepower between the turbo V4 and electric motors. And from 2015 to 2017, it absolutely dominated. I'm talking this thing won the six hours of Spa, the six hours of Silverstone, three time WEC champions, and back to back to back, 24 hours of Le Mans champions. But then just like that, Porsche quit. Why? Well, because they wanted to go racing in Formula E. But they did have this fully developed race car and nothing to do with it. So they said, hey engineers, what if we took the limiter off? I could, uh, I could build a, I could build a, I could build a spaceship. You, you're, you're not, you're not gonna say no? Build away, whatever your name is. And that's how we got the Porsche 919 Evo. No rules, no fuel limits, no air restrictors, no FIA clipboard guy going, um, actually, that's illegal. Just raw performance tuned by Mad Men. At the heart of the 919 Evo is still that same two liter turbocharged V4 engine. Usually when you hear the words four cylinder, the first thing that comes to mind is a bland, slow economy car. Not the fastest car in the world. But this engine was a technological masterpiece. Compact and feather light, coming in at just 91 and a half pounds. You understand me, this whole entire motor weighs less than a large family dog. It used direct fuel injection in a single turbocharger mounted inside the engine valley. A configuration designed to minimize turbo lag and reduce overall engine packaging. They even went as far as to route the intercooler air through the engine block up into the valley from the bottom to avoid having to route a large intercooler pipe back up and around the motor. And the turbo was no ordinary turbo. Oh, no, no, no. This turbo had dual boost technology, meaning that the compressor wheel is two-sided. This allows for all of the benefits of a smaller turbo. Less lag, better efficiency, and less weight, but doesn't choke out at higher RPM, which is good because this thing had a screaming red line of 9,000 RPM. This engine alone would make for a serious performance platform, but it only made up half of the 919 Evo's fury. The other half of the magic came from Porsche's hybrid system. The 919 Evo featured a dual source energy recovery setup. One motor generator unit, dubbed the MGUK, was mounted on the front axle and captured kinetic energy under braking, while the other unit, the GUH, worked in parallel to the turbocharger. Its job was to harvest heat energy from the exhaust gases that otherwise would have been expelled to the atmosphere. Just like a turbo, but instead of the cold side being used to charge intake air, it's attached to a generator to charge its battery. This dual harvest design stored its energy in a custom lithium ion battery pack and allowed the front axle to deploy a staggering amount of horsepower through the electric motors. The hybrid system alone would outperform many high performance sports cars today. And when paired with the V4 engine and torque vectoring across all four wheels, it made the Evo untouchable. With no regulatory shackles, Porsche's engineers went wild on weight savings. The 919 Evo tipped the scales at just 849 kilograms making it about 39 kilograms lighter than the WEC version. This reduction was achieved by stripping non-essential systems like air conditioning, windshield wipers, and the onboard pneumatic jack. The use of carbon fiber reinforced composites throughout the monocoque and bodywork was extensive. Every ounce of weight removed meant better acceleration, better cornering, and maybe most crucially, better aero response. Aerodynamics were perhaps the most radical part of the 919's evolution. In the world of motorsport, active aerodynamics is heavily regulated, but Porsche had no such limitations here. The Evo's aero systems included a massive DRS-style rear wing, 
movable front diffusers, and adjustable flaps that responded in real time to telemetry inputs. Controlled by an array of GPS sensors, wheel speed monitors, and yaw rate data, the system continually optimized drag and downforce for every single corner, straight, and braking zone. Compared to the already blistering fast WEC version, the Evo produced 53% more downforce and achieved 66% greater aerodynamic efficiency. To handle this immense grip, Porsche worked closely with Michelin to develop their slick tires, wider and grippier than anything ever used in the WEC. These tires had softer compounds and greater contact patches, offering extreme levels of global grip for these shorter time attack style runs. The suspension was retuned accordingly, with pushrod operated torsion bars and adaptive dampers tuned to handle the car's increased loads. Real-time adjustment of damper stiffness, spring rates, and anti-roll behavior gave the car unmatched composure even at ludicrous speeds. It's not just a race car, it's a science project that could do 30% of the speed of sound around the Nürburgring. Let's talk about some of the lap records, because it's got plenty of them. First stop, Spa, one of the most legendary and challenging tracks in the world. Known for its fast, flowing layout and unpredictable weather, Spa stretches over seven kilometers, 4.352 miles. The track's elevation changes, high speed straights, and technical sections demand exceptional skill and courage from the drivers. And in 2018, Porsche took the 919 Evo there and said, hey, Lewis Hamilton, watch this. The time to beat, one minute, 42.553 seconds, the F1 pull time set by Lewis Hamilton in 2017. The 919 Evo's time, one minute, 41.770. It beat a Formula One car at a Formula One track with a guy who's never raced in Formula One. Let that sink in for a second. Stop two, the Nürburgring Nordschleife, a legendary 12.9 mile circuit winding through Germany's Eiffel Mountains. Infamous for its extreme difficulty, featuring over 150 corners, dramatic elevation changes, and narrow, unforgiving stretches lined with armco barriers and dense forests. Its demanding nature makes it a proving ground for both race cars and production vehicles, with manufacturers using it as the ultimate benchmark for performance. And this is where the real flex happened. The previous record, six minutes and 11.13 seconds set by a Group C Porsche 956 in 1983. That record stood for 35 years. Then came the 919 Evo. The new time, five minutes and 19.55 seconds. They didn't just break the record, they demolished it. It was so fast, the onboard footage looks fake. People genuinely thought that the video was sped up. And spoiler, it wasn't. From the start, the 919 Evo was a goodbye letter. Porsche didn't build it to race. They built it to show what was possible when nobody said no. The red banner on the livery had everyone's names who ever worked on the project as a thank you. It sparked a quiet war within engineering circles. F1 teams were shook. LMP teams had existential crises. And suddenly, the Nürburgring record lap was possible again. But even today, nothing has touched it. Not F1 cars, not hypercars, nobody. The closest time to date was set by Volkswagen in their electric IDR with a time of six minutes and 5.33 seconds. And I know Volkswagen's not what I would have expected either, but that's a story for a different time. But let me put this into perspective for a second because do you understand? If the Evo crossed the finish line right now, it would be this long before the IDR came through. Hmm. Your move. Still waiting. Hmm. Your move. What do you mean I'm in check already? What? The IDR crosses the finish line. 
And that's part of why the 919 EVO matters. It's a reminder of what happens when manufacturers stop playing nice and start building cars that make the laws of physics start sounding more like the suggestions of physics. So if you ever wonder, what's the fastest car in the world? It's not a Bugatti, it's not a Koenigsegg, and it's not a McLaren. It's a car that never entered a race. One that certainly wasn't street legal, built in a lab by Germans with a grudge. The Porsche 919 Evo is the final boss of motorsport. A car so fast, the only thing it couldn't outrun was the end of its own era. As always, if you made it this far in the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and do all the things that make the YouTube algorithm really happy. It really helps the channel out and by proxy helps me out. But anyway, I'm done rambling, so I'll see you nerds on the next one.